Welcome everybody to uh, preparing for the legislative session. That's ultimately what we're doing by participating in the position proposal window. So thanks all for being here. Uh, to start, because there are lots of folks who are here, it's fine if you have your cameras off, but if you wanna put them on, we'd love to see your faces, but you may be eating lunch and um, want some anim anim anonymity, um, that's fine too. Uh, but would love if at least in the chat, you can type right now anything that you're hoping to learn about today. Uh, Logan and I have prepared a presentation based on questions that we've heard in previous years from school board members and some things that we've heard just in the last couple of weeks uh, hoping that we prepare something that's most helpful, but certainly it would be great to know from you directly if there's anything that you came here today really hoping to learn uh, by one o'clock and we'll see what we can do to answer those questions. So uh, just an introduction, if you don't know me, my name's Marissa Rathbone. I am your Director of Strategic Advocacy with WASDA. Logan? And I am Logan Endress. I'm your Strategic Advocacy Specialist. And Brittany? Brittany Montano. I am an excuse me. I'm an administrative assistant here at WASTA. Thanks, Brittany. So uh, myself, Logan, and Brittany work together to provide you with timely services and products as it relates to the year-round advocacy cycle. And so right now is a very important time. In fact, I would propose that it's the most important time of our annual uh, advocacy cycle because it gives you the opportunity to engage in our democratic process for the position window review and possible submission. I'd also like for um, Rebecca Stellings to introduce herself, if you wouldn't mind, Rebecca. Sure. My name is Rebecca Stillings. I am the chair of the legislative committee, the WASDA Legislative Committee. Uh, I am in DA Area 5, and I serve on the Rainier School Board, um, which is a rural school district of about 850 students in Thurston County and have for 18 years. Wow. And I'm so glad you all are here. Thanks, Rebecca. And Rebecca's going to have a chance a little bit later in our presentation to share some perspective from the point of view of a school board member, obviously, but also as our chair of the legislative committee. And I apologize. I would also be remiss if I didn't um, note that Sean Duke, our communications officer, is also joining us today. Um, he is uh, a consistent behind the scenes support for all the work of WASDA. And uh, a lot of the materials that you see coming from our agency are um, refined by him, um, making them better products so that you can read them. Anything that you wanted to say, Sean? Not at all. Just welcome, everyone. I hope this is informative for you. Thanks, Sean. All right. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get up this PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you are just joining now, if you could please go ahead in your in the chat to go ahead and put Anything that you're hoping to learn by the end of this presentation today, that'll help Logan, and Brittany, and Rebecca, and Lakeisha, who's our uh, vice chair of Ledge Committee who just joined, um, help us be sure to respond to any questions that you might have. So go ahead and just pop those in the chat. And then I would also invite you to continue to ask questions through the chat. So if you have a question, just go ahead and type it in the chat. Um, and then when it's the right timing for us to answer it, we'll be sure to get to it. Okay. Nope. Okay. So hopefully in your, you're in the right place. You're here to learn about the position proposal window. And Logan, you said you can see it. Um, and really, we want to focus largely on, given this point in time during the annual advocacy cycle, what your specific roles um, can and should be um, in order to support your board and your community in advocating on behalf of your students. Uh, just a little bit about what you're going to hear today. We're going to talk about advocacy in, in terms of WASDA membership year round. We're going to help orient you to our existing positions platform. We're going to talk specifically about your roles and responsibilities as a school board member. Maybe you're here as the ledger rep. Maybe you've been asked to collect information and bring it back to your board. Um, so we'll talk about all those different layers and then uh, be sure that you know the key dates and resources in order to effectively engage in this process. 
Okay, so um, a little bit about year-round advocacy. Um, as I think Marissa said when she uh, was first kicking us off this morning, is that advocacy happens year-round. Um, there is so much that happens outside of the legislative session, although a lot of people think that, you know, during the legislative session is when it happens and that's when you need to be engaged. Although that's true, um, you definitely need to be engaged year round as this is now the time uh, you'll hear us refer to this as the interim. Uh, when policy discussions are happening and when, you know, U.S. school directors and we as WASDA are able to be connecting with legislators about the issues that are happening in schools so that uh, good policy and good bills can be developed to then be put through the process during the next legislative session. So we're really glad you're here and really excited about the opportunity for the position review window to make sure that our advocacy is as representative as possible going into 2023. Um, you'll see this icon on the screen. We use this quite a bit. Uh, Marissa's hovering her mouse over sort of the period that we're in right now, which is uh, sort of assessing the outcomes of the legislative session, what happened, what didn't happen and then sort of comparing that to our existing positions that we're gonna talk about in just a minute to make sure that our positions are as refined and strong as possible to guide our advocacy moving forward. Okay, so a little bit about uh, the structure at WASDA and how we advocate. Um, WASDA as an organization, of course, has a vision, mission, and goals, and that is to effectively support uh, all school board members. We also have bylaws and operating policies, which are governed by our board of directors. Uh, members of our board of directors are elected by you all as school board members. And then we also have both permanent and legislative positions, which are uh, initiated, amended, revised uh, by you, by your voice. Um, and that really is the root of all of the advocacy that we do at WASDA. We represent you. Um, so engaging in the review and uh, possible amendment process of our permanent legislative positions is uh, what your job is right now. Okay, so just a quick overview about our positions. We do have two sets of them. We have uh, first permanent positions, which are the core beliefs and values of the organization. And uh, they guide all areas of WASDA and are also a great advisory for school board members. Um, as I mentioned, sort of related to the core, belief and core beliefs and values, um, these positions are um, focused on issues of widespread concern, things with uh, lots of longevity, um, and uh, that probably aren't changed very often. So uh, we have things like simple majority, a, a permanent position that we've had since I think the 80s. Um, we've got some that date back even further than that. Um, on the other side of the house, we have our legislative positions, which are uh, action-oriented, uh, and specific to legislative advocacy, which is the work that Marissa and I do. Um, I do want to point out, though, that in our work as your strategic advocacy team, we do use and rely heavily on both sets of positions, as they both uh, are representative of your beliefs as school board members and guide the organization. However, the positions on the legislative side are specifically action-oriented and communicate your viewpoints on a spectrum of state and federal issues. Great. I'm going to go ahead and hop in and uh, wanted to acknowledge that we did get a question in the chat from Michael Brondi about a request uh, to review the results of the last legislative session. Um, we will hold that if there's some time at the end, we'll be happy to show you some of the uh, uh, publications that we provided through in session, both a summary of the bills that passed as well as the budget overview. Um, since the specific purpose of this is to focus more on the position window, let us get through this and then would love to help answer that question. So thanks for that. And um, on that note, I'm just going to add, I'm going to drop some links in the chat that will bring you to our two um, in session summary documents. One of them is specifically related to policy and sort of bills that pass and another related to reflections on the budget and how that impacts US districts. I'm gonna drop those links in the chat. Thanks Logan for doing that. You should be able to just click, click right on those and then we can also show you the website where they sit in perpetuity. 
Great. So talking a little bit about your role as a school director, um, some of you have uh, great expertise. You've been doing this for a long time, so you feel really confident in your role. Others are just joining for the very first year um, and really navigating what this advocacy work really is, what's the position window, and what are our legislative positions? And those are all perfectly good, relevant, um, and timely questions to be asking. So for some of you, Logan and I are going to be going over information that... Um, you are already very familiar with, um, but if that's the case, then would love to hear some of your perspectives as well as an experienced board member who has engaged in this process previously. Uh, we're really hoping to be sure that uh, we are able to reach the widest audience possible. Logan and my dream would be to have engagement from all 295 school districts in our General Assembly, that all 295 school districts uh, weigh in on the prioritization process of our positions following General Assembly, um, and that all of our 1,477 locally elected school board members are familiar with the existing position platform that we already have in place, because it is so robust and so reflective, a variety of perspectives um, from small and large districts, east and west districts. It's certainly not perfect. There's room for improvement, uh, but uh, it's good to know what's already in place before we consider how to improve it moving forward. And that's really what this time of year is about. So we invite you at this point in time uh, to consider the key or, uh, issues and priorities that your school board cares about. Uh, you've probably been having these conversations recently and, and over the last course of the two years, and you're looking ahead to what's possible as we uh, move from pandemic to endemic uh, and what next school year might look like. Uh, it's important to consider these things and then compare uh, what your priorities are against our existing legislative positions um, as well as permanent positions. And um, I think somebody's got their mic open if you wouldn't mind muting, I would really appreciate that. Thanks so much. Um, so if you think about what's important to you and then take a look at the 239 existing legislative and permanent positions and ensure that the values, priorities and advocacy needs of for your school district are reflected in our current position platform, that's sort of step one. That's what we've been hoping you've been doing over the course of the last month as we've been advertising the upcoming position window. Um, and the positions document is really your best resource for that. In addition to that, uh, Logan put in the last two in sessions, which is our weekly summary during the legislative session of what's going on um, from week to week and what to anticipate in the week ahead. Uh, the two that he put into the chat are an overview of the policy results as it relates to the priorities of membership um, last year following General Assembly, as well as an, a budget overview, how school districts are impacted by the results of the budget. Those are some good things to just take a look at as you consider what's also important to your school board that has already occurred, um, or maybe something that maybe was close to occurring but didn't quite and should be elevated as a higher priority as we move ahead. Uh, we also create a bill watch list and in our current, this link will take you to the bills that passed as well as the bills that didn't pass. Sometimes school boards like to take a look at which bills didn't pass to identify uh, some that were important to you that didn't move forward uh, to elevate attention to them moving into the next legislative session. And then we also in this PowerPoint presentation provided some links to our partners who oftentimes align um, and sometimes don't with WASDA member priorities. Uh, but it's also nice to see how they present their member summaries following a legislative session. So a couple of resources there to help guide your process. Logan, I see a couple things came into chat. Anything I should know before I um, pass it on to Rebecca to share some reflections about the importance of participating in this process? My chat might be lagging because all I see in chat are the links that I dropped in. Do you see other things? N nope. I, you're okay. Good. I just okay. saw that there were a couple new ones and they were all you. They were all <laughs> you. Um, I am going to just make sure everybody's muted here as we move forward. Um, and if uh, just to go ahead and check your mute, if you could go ahead and mute, that would be much appreciated. Thanks so much. Okay. So um, I'm going to take this off the screen so uh, attention can be focused more on Rebecca um, to give some of your perspective. 
Uh, come on, Rebecca, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and then at the same time, I'm going to pull up some other documents that we can refer to, um, particularly the positions document, just so you know, Rebecca, that's going to be kind of our next step. And if you'd like me to pull that up, um, I'm happy to do that if that's helpful to you. Uh, no, you're good. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And I'm going to also um, tap Lakeisha if you um, have anything that you would like to share with the group as well, because I know you and I have um, some shared perspectives, and, and we also have different perspectives given um, the districts that we serve. And um, so uh, this is um, such important work. I've been part of Ledge Committee for about five years now and have really grown in my understanding of um, WASDA and really how they do represent us as school board directors um, in the 295 districts across the state. Um, I've learned that we do have both the legislative platform, the positions and the permanent positions, and we really do need to look across them. Um, and they are one platform. One of the things that I was thinking about is, you know, we have General Assembly and we have been working really hard to try and make it more and more accessible and having more and more districts. Um, you know, I've been there where we've had um, weighted votes that were really, really close and um, that they were close because there were a lot of districts that showed up that maybe only had a couple one or two, three votes based upon the size of their, their district versus the larger ones. And it's not about large school, small school, um, but in order to really have an influence on what happens, you have to show up at general assembly. You have to show up during the positions window, which is going now. Um, and showing up is, is uh, probably um, the most important thing, right? Um, but over the last five years, um, the other thing that I've also really realized is that um, we may have positions at General Assembly that have a ton of heat around them and there's a lot of passion and it may seem like the most important thing in the world. When we go into session, um, that most important thing in the world is one position that we bring against one legislative um, uh, proposal that's being made. We have to look at the breadth of our platform to respond to and to be proactive about what the legislature is discussing. And if they have a particular um, bill that has a lot of heat around it and we don't have, we have a gap there. We've had that happen, was it two years ago around the lead? in the school rooms, we lead didn't have water. a position, <laughs> lead in the water, we didn't have a position so we couldn't respond. Um, so that's why it's, it, it's important to look for the gaps. Um, we have a really diverse platform. It does, I'm a small school, rural school, and um, there are positions that really represent um, the perspective of my board, my district and smaller schools. And then there are some that maybe are not as, um, important to me, but they're really important to communities and school districts that have a different um, student population, for example. Um, but um, when we're when we're in session, um, if we don't have if we if we have Marissa and Logan look across the breadth of the platform, they look at our permanent positions, which um, are those long enduring things um, that we have stood for um, for you know over over time um, in order to to like advocate our position because it does represent all of us. And I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit, um, but I guess the most important thing is read all of, read, read them all. Um, if you have an idea about something that you might wanna propose and you don't see it in the permanent side and you don't see it in the, the, um, the legislative side, give your DA rep a call, um, have a conversation about it and see if, if you, maybe you, you've just missed something. Um, and we have 239 positions and we're really trying to figure out how to um, make them more streamlined and not repetitive and not, the other thing I guess I would add, when we get to the prioritization process, if we have five positions that are kind of the same, those could be prioritized across the five and never reach it into the top 15, which is how we develop, is it 15 that develops our, our platform for the upcoming legislative ses session? So um, I would say, look at look across them all. Um, and absolutely, if if you haven't gone to General Assembly before, please show up. It's um, super important to the work that we do. And Lakeisha, I'm going to have you pop in and add anything that you would say. Um, I guess, and the one other thing that I would say is all of our positions are important and all of our positions matter. And if we're not talking about them, it's not because they don't matter. It's maybe because there isn't something to be speaking 
to them for with the legislature. We develop our platforms so that WASDA, we, we all can advocate for school districts across the state. So, Lakeisha, it's great to see you. What would you add? <laughs> you covered it all. Okay. Uh, I did that. Uh, no, good afternoon. Do we make it? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Lakeisha Phillips. I am in the Federal uh, Way School District, DA2, Director A2. Um, it was not director area. See, I'm used to being at my school board meeting. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Um, but I don't think I would add too much um, more. It's a great process. I think I enjoy it because you get to collaborate and find out that, you know, so many districts have similar concerns. So it was, you know, great to work with other directors around digital equity. It was great to um, work with other directors across the state around our water. Um, and so I think going into this section, it's just another opportunity to yeah, collaborate with other people, see that we have more in common than not and kind of have those conversations and see what we can get done in the next upcoming session. So lots of planning, like you said, lots of research. Um, I personally just reach out to Marissa and Logan and ask questions like, hey, I'm thinking in this direction. Like, is there something already there? Because I do feel like 230 positions is a lot to get through. So just use them as a resource um genuinely they get back incredibly fast so just reach out ask questions and partner with other districts small and large and see where everybody is, is at in the advocacy process hey, Lakeisha, how many students in federal way federal way we have twenty-two thousand students so we're a pretty big district we got 38 buildings um yeah pretty we've got 200 and something languages within so our district Pretty yeah. dynamic. <laughs> yeah, so Lakeisha and I partnered on a position last year. And um, I'm from a small district about, I think I 865-ish um, FTE. Um, not too diverse. Um, I think we, ha we have one language. And um, we partnered on a position. And so one of the things about being involved that has been really meaningful to me is that I realized that Rainier School District in rural Thurston County has so many issues involved with Federal Way and are consistent or the same as Seattle School District, Spokane, Kettle Falls. I mean, we have so, so much more in common because we all care about doing what's best for our kids. Every single one of us, so. Yeah, I would say that's my part too, is the collaboration and sharing of ideas to kind of get in that direction. It is really helpful and to ask what that's like because districts are consistently changing, right? People are moving, students are moving. Mm -hmm. So how can you kind of have a, a really a more statewide approach to solutions? We are talking about, you know, over a million children. So I think at times it's hard to think that large and wide, like what does that look like? So again, that partnership and like, I just say bringing curiosity to the table, like what is that like in a small district? I know. I was just talking with somebody else and their school had less than 500 kids and I'm like what does that look like um and so how can we make something that kind of fits for everybody ditto thanks you two appreciate your leadership of the legislative committee and um also being available to answer questions of our members because uh you've got the boots on the ground experience and um Appreciate that you can answer our members' questions as well. There were a couple questions in the chat. I'll just reflect because they may be questions that you're having too. Uh, when is General Assembly? It is uh, tentatively almost certainly planned for September 30th and uh, October 1st. That's a Friday, Saturday. Doesn't roll off the tongue because it splits the month. Um, and it will be a virtual General Assembly. Uh, the reason we decided to continue to move forward with a virtual General Assembly uh, is by and large to enable all 295 school districts to participate from wherever they are. We have heard in the past that some school districts had a financial obstacle um, or even a travel obstacle uh, in attending an in-person general assembly, which was called a legislative assembly previously. We wanted to remove as many obstacles as possible in ensuring that all 295 school districts could be represented moving forward. Um, if for some reason you're uh, personal uh, residence uh, has some restrictions or um, uh, broadband access issues, 
We have heard from school board members being able to successfully participate by working with their school district to be in the school district offices for those Friday and Saturday dates. So um, be thinking about how you can ensure that you're able to access that on those dates as we plan. Uh, anything that I forgot there, Logan, or did that cover it? Um, I would just add that with the virtual assembly, there's also no cost. Um, I think that's also been something that um, was well received by school districts. Again, we want to make it as accessible as possible. So uh, plan on uh, signing up for a link and not paying a registration fee. And that's, um, that is a, a free um, registration for the voting delegate. So each school district's each school district gets access for the voting delegate to attend for free. Um, last year, we didn't charge anything else. Um, uh, not sure what we're planning to do moving forward, but um, the voting delegate will be able to participate at no cost. So I'm gonna um, move to some tools and resources to help you. Um, we've been talk talking a lot of important philosophy right now, but let's give you some tips and tricks as you figure out how to uh, navigate this. So I uh, don't know if you've noticed, but there are links on our websites and materials at this point in time, which will provide you with a single document that actually combines both the permanent and legislative positions into one position platform. Again, the importance of this is communicating that whether a position is permanent or legislative in nature, uh, they are all our positions and we utilize all of them to inform our advocacy efforts. Logan, thumbs up that you can see that document up on the screen, great. Um, so a couple ways that I um, use this tool uh, because it is many pages long, um, 46 full pages uh, representing 239 districts. I wanted to orient you to the fact um, our contact information is here. Always feel free to email us. And when you look at the position listing at a glance, it will show you the title of the position. Uh, a PP designates that it's a permanent position. Uh, LP, I'm going to skip SLP for a second, an LP indicates that it's a legislative position. And an SLP is a particular kind of legislative position that has been voted positively by membership at General Assembly for four years or more. So it basically just means it has a little bit more sustainability. Um, it's been around longer than some others. Um, and then the page number that you'll find it. But if you don't wanna actually scroll through the positions, cause there are so many to find a topic that you're interested in. If you just go up to the search and document um, section, you can search by word. Uh, and so what I wanted to show you here, there had been some questions about the positions that WASDA membership has most um, consistently prioritized. In this, in this document, which I'll upload into our chat, I actually highlighted uh, 10 of the positions that have shown up at the top of our ranking prioritization for the last 10 years. We took a look back over the last 10 years of, of post ledge assembly or general assembly. What did our membership prioritize? And there was a lot of overlap. And so wanted to be sure that you saw some of that. One of the positions that has been prioritized consistently and continues to rise into our top 10 is support for special education. So I'm just going to type in special education. It'll highlight in this document where that phrase is located. Um, and so uh, there are a couple there are a couple positions that rate relate to it. It's important to notice whether it's a PP or an LP. Um, I'm going to go specifically to the position that talks about support for special education programs. So this is the position that has often been prioritized to the top of the list. Currently, there's only one um, legislative position that's really specific to this. There's also a permanent position that talks about um, importance of programs for students with disabilities. In the past, you have had the opportunity to prioritize only legislative positions. Following this upcoming legis uh, General Assembly, you'll have the opportunity to prioritize permanent and legislative positions. So this is important to note because um, as you'll notice, we have some that have uh, references to special education, some that are specific to special education. So it'll be important for your board to be familiar with, with the positions that speak most clearly to your school district's needs. So this position has spoken pretty clearly to a lot of school board needs over the last five or more years as it has been prioritized consistently at the top. 
This is one of the ones, it, it does talk about funding. Um, I'll also just note that we have quite a few positions that are related to funding. And um, as you are aware, the K-12 funding formula in the state of Washington is a very complex system. You've got, um, You've got a basic education formula, you've got federal funds coming down, you've got transportation, um, we've got various funding sources, so federal, state, trust lands, um, grant programs, lots of different ways these come together. So oftentimes what happens is because we have so many positions around um, funding is that many of them are prioritized at the top of our prioritization list, but could be um, sort of in uh, competition with one another. The position that is most consistently prioritized in our membership over the last 10 years, in fact, it's been prioritized um, as the number one position for many districts, is called full funding of basic education. So I'm just typing that. You, of course, are not expected to remember um, the titles of things. So if you just type in some keywords, it can help you find it. Um, so this is a position that has been consistently prioritized by our membership from year to year. So WASA shall, shall initiate or support legislation that fully funds and implements all aspects of Washington's program of basic ed, including graduation requirements as established in the RCW. Um, so I highlighted this one for you to see. So there are a host of others. I'm not going to walk you through all of these, but I wanted you to see how by pulling up this, like pulling up this document, your board really cares about world language programs, let's say. So you could type in world language and see where there's reference to world language in our existing uh, um, positions platform. So this is a permanent position. So you'll see references here. Um, going to move forward. And there's also a standing legislative position that is um, very specific to K-12 world language instruction. Again, it is largely related to funding, but also talks about promoting innovative models for comprehensive world language instruction. So just a little way to use this tool. Logan, what else would you add in terms of this document and what our members might want to know about for using? Hmm. I don't know that there's anything else um, specifically that I would add, I guess. Um, I guess I would just say there are lots of positions uh, in the document, as Marissa has said. And so, um, you know, I think your, your, your job right now is to really look through this as you compare it to your school district priorities and make sure that Either you find your priorities represented within this document, and if not, uh, we're going to talk about this next. This is your opportunity to propose amendments. Oh, you're on mute still, Marissa. <laughs> Got lots of screens up. Thank you. Um, I am going to show you the website where our positions are posted. Um, and it's pretty easy to find. It's just wasda.org backslash positions. This expands it a little bit, but um, this is how you can access it. It's also in the PowerPoint presentation, which we'll make available to you. Um, it gives a lot of the timelines on here, the process, a video that we recorded overviewing the positions document. So this is a, um, this is a helpful tool for you to use. Um, as well as some of the key dates, which we'll go over here in just a second. And then the last part I just wanted to draw your attention to in our PowerPoint presentation. is around uh, the process from here. So we've talked a lot about reviewing the existing positions because it's really important for you to know what currently exists before you suggest changes. After you've had the opportunity to do a comprehensive review and you're on a bit of a timeline at this point uh, because the position window closes at uh, April 20th at 5 p.m., if your board discovers that you have a very important issue, something that's substantive that needs to be changed in an existing position, 
or a position that's entirely new that is not part of our existing 239, this is your opportunity to submit uh, updates to existing positions so it better reflects your board's uh, interests and needs. Um, you And then also you could submit a new or an innovative position that's not currently referenced in our existing 239. You'll also have the opportunity, should you desire, to suggest a retirement of a position. That means, um, from your perspective, the objective of that position has already been met. Uh, so you would suggest that it be retired and we'll save those positions in a side document as our uh, retirees. Uh, and then you could also suggest consolidation. So an, an example might be we've got a permanent and a legislative position um, that uh, are both around simple majority. Um, so you could potentially submit a consolidation of those two. Um, we also have a lot of positions on funding, as I mentioned before. And if you saw some du duplication between some funding positions, and wanted to suggest that they be consolidated in some way by suggesting some language that pulls both of the positions together, uh, that would also be an opportunity for you to consider some improvements to our platform. Just so you know, our legislative committee and our resolutions committee both does some of this work as well. Uh, most specifically, they look at existing positions to determine where there is duplicity and um, duplication to determine if there's a better way to put a couple, two or more positions together. That's really helpful, especially because what is possible is that one school district may see full funding of basic education is really important, and another one sees um, full funding staffing levels as really important. They're very closely related. And then what ends up happening is one gets uh, above the other and the other one gets number two. And then your world language position may never actually see the top 10 because you've got all these funding positions that end up getting prioritized towards the top. So there's, there's some possibility there if you have the time, but also know that ledge and res committees are doing some of that work as well. So these are some of the things that you'll be able to do through the position proposal window uh, moving into the weeks ahead. Anything that I should also tell them, Logan? I guess I, on that same um, note that you were just making about consolidation, I think another another just perspective that I would share is, you know, as there are multiple positions that may say something very similar on the same topic, and you know, one school district sees this position is the one they care about, and another school district sees this one, you're really kind of splitting that prioritization vote by school districts. And, uh, you know, you may see one get number one and another get number two, or you may not see a position actually make it into the prioritization or into the top 15, if you will, because that vote is split between multiple positions. So, you know, I think, um, I think looking through and considering consolidation, especially if you see language that is very similar between multiple positions is going to be important and may help make our priorities more reflective uh, of what it is that you actually want to see in them. Thanks, Logan. That's a good point. Um, I'd also just add that if you do submit suggested amendment language to existing positions, please make sure that it's a substantive amendment. Um, any position proposal that comes through our window will come to General Assembly for a vote. Uh, in between the time you submit and General Assembly, either our legislative or our permanent, um, I'm sorry, either our legislative or resolutions committees will review and make a recommendation about whether or not they believe that position should get a do pass or a do not pass. Uh, it, regardless of their position, it will come to General Assembly for a vote. So if you suggest a change to language, um, maybe uh, there's an academic acceleration position and you say, well, I don't like the word acceleration. I wanna call it academic improvements versus acceleration. And you submit a change to that, we'll have to go through a voting process for it. Um, and I would just encourage you to think about uh, in terms of advocacy efforts, we're not writing bill language here. Um, in terms of advocacy efforts, does it allow us, not just WASDA staff, but you essentially to do the, 
do the same thing. So if we have a position on academic acceleration and a bill comes forward uh, related to academic acceleration, um, but maybe the bill says academic improvement instead, we can, we can ultimately do the same thing because the language is close enough to give us the same sort of direction. So again, my point in this is just be sure that whatever you're, you're submitting is truly substantive in nature if you're suggesting an amendment. Um, if you Press have a up. yes, I do see that Karen has a question. Go ahead, Karen. Hey, thank you so much, both Logan and Marissa. This is just timely and very, very informative. I just wanted to talk just a little bit or get some, some input on um, how specific on some of these. I'm looking at specifically, you know, I'm kind of looking at, we have a position that promotes um, environmental conservation and stewardship. And I'm thinking about how broad this would be for your advocacy purposes on say a bill that, that comes before the legislature to promote um, green building because that would, would a position like this allow you to advocate for specific bills that have to do with specific green building processes or just say solar on buildings? Is this enough or would we need something more specific? It's a great question, Karen. Um, I think the position as it currently stands give us, gives us the ability to support green buildings in general. In addition to that, we have a position that talks about um, no unfunded mandates, um, state paid construction costs, um, and construction revenue. So one of the challenging things about our position platform is that, and also just about the legislative process, is it's it's truly not black or white, right? So we have a lot of really great policies that come forward through the legislature that aren't funded. Um, and ultimately we really have to walk the line. So let's, I'm gonna go back to using the world language position um, again. That talked about promoting innovation in world language. It also talked about funding in world language. Um, and so if, if the innovation is there, the, pol the good policy is there and the funding is there, it's kind of a slam dunk for us because we've got a position that says we can support something that uh, promotes and funds something. Uh, unfortunately, what often happens is that, especially in the world of construction, some good ideas come forward as it relates to conservation, uh, but there's no state funding to support it and no change to the school construction and assistance program in order to enable districts to really pay for those types of changes to the programming. So um, I would say that if you're looking at that position and it, it essentially gets to the policy that you'd like to see, but doesn't reference any of the supportive funding that would be necessary, that that might warrant a substantive change uh, to submit through the process. And I don't have the position pulled up right in front of me, but my recollection is because it's a permanent position, it doesn't reference um, initiating funding uh, through the legislature for supports of conservation. So it's I kind of didn't directly answer your question, but I would encourage you to take another look at it and say, if a policy came forward but didn't have the funding, would WASDA truly be able to support uh, that kind of proposal? Perfect. This is very helpful, Marissa. I thank you. I think I've got some direction. Nice. Thanks, Karen. Okay, let's get more money, huh? Let's get more money. I know. It's so hard because... There, there are so many really great policies that come forward through the legislature um, and uh, some of them are funded um, and many of them are not. Um, and again, that's a really difficult uh, advocacy line for us to walk. And we, we oftentimes in our testimony and our communications with legislators say, we love this policy. We've got a position to support it. Our members um, believe that this is an important policy proposal. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to put our full support behind it unless there's adequate funding to ensure that its implementation is effective. So I, if I had a dollar for every time I said that, I'd have $100, maybe $1,000, somewhere in that range. Thank you for continuing to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, do you want to go over key dates and then uh, maybe we can field some more questions? 
Sure, yeah. So just to kind of reframe uh, what now uh, through the General Assembly looks like in terms of important dates for you to know, the position window is open should you choose to submit an amendment, consolidation, retirement, or novel position. You can do that right now on wazda.org slash positions. That window is open until April 20th at 5 o'clock p.m. And um, that 5 o'clock p.m. deadline is a hard stop. If you go in to try to submit something at 502, the form will not work. So make sure that you are uh, submitting that by five o'clock on April 20th. Once that window closes through about the end of June, our WASDA committees will be reviewing, uh, analyzing all of the proposals that came in. Um, of course, coming back to the proposers, should they have questions, want more information. And then uh, as a part of preparation for General Assembly, we'll be making their recommendations about whether or not that position proposal should receive a do pass or do not pass vote at the General Assembly, which is uh, tentatively almost confirmed uh, to be scheduled September 30th and October 1st uh, online. So, um, and then also just on screen right now, you see email addresses for myself and Marissa, and then also Kelsey Winters, our policy and legal coordinator. Uh-oh, Logan, you- um... Content themselves. Okay. You're back Am now. Am I cutting out? You cut out, you were referencing um, Kelsey, our policy and legal coordinator. All right, sorry about that. I turned my screen off. Hopefully that helps. It's weird. We're all at WASDA and the Wi-Fi um, still could clearly be better. Um, just wanted to reference and point out Kelsey Winters. Her contact information is also here. Um, Marissa, Kelsey, and I are really your three uh, point people within WASDA should you have questions about the form um, or about the content related to uh, the positions themselves or the content you might be proposing. Uh, Marissa and I are your best bet for all things legislative positions, and Kelsey is your best bet for all things permanent positions. Thanks, Logan. I thought it might also be helpful since we've got a few minutes left, um, and I think our questions are cleared. I wanted to show uh, you, because I bet you're asking, well, if I didn't get it in my inbox, which you did through the membership update last week, uh, our communications team, uh, Sean specifically, sent out um, individual notification that the position window is open, and there's a direct link there. If you, for some reason, didn't get it, please check your spam or your junk folder. Sometimes it filters for mass emails, and so um, sometimes we worry you don't get everything that you're looking for you should be receiving. So in the absence of you knowing exactly where that uh, email is in your inbox. I'm going to show you on our website where you can also find this information. There's our home page. Make it big. Logan, can you see the website? Sure can. Okay. So uh, because it was just released um, on this homepage right now, you can go right to the position platform, uh, position window open here. I'm assuming the link is here. It's not here. Logan, where is it? I think it's on wasta.org slash positions. Okay. So do you, you wanna go there via searching that? Do what? I was just going to say, do you want to search that in the bar or do you want to navigate there from our homepage? Hmm. Let me just put it in the bar. All right. If you just make it to our WASDA homepage, you can also find this information by going to our About tab. And then down in that drop down list, you'll see a page called Positions, and that'll take you here. That's great, thank you. Okay, so embedded in our timeline, um, this, this webinar was supposed to be on March 29th, but when we got there, we only had one school board member and Rebecca, which was a lovely intimate conversation we got to have, but didn't seem as helpful to the masses as this particular conversation is. So we rescheduled for today. Uh, so the proposal form uh, was released last Friday, again, went out to all 1,477 school board members in their inbox, uh, but you can also find it here. Um, we're not going to dig into this in too much detail, but just a few things for you to know. I got a great question from a school district 
last week who's just participating for the very first time in the position window process. They've never even as a board talked about the uh, legislative and permanent position. So this is the type of movement that we're so excited to hear about and see because like I said, when we opened, our goal is to ensure that all 295 school districts are engaged in this process year round. So really excited to hear about that. The question that she asked was, do we have to have an approval of a board vote in order to submit a position? The answer to that question is yes. If when you submit, you are submitting, I'm coming down here um, on behalf of your school board or jo jointly with one or more other school boards. So if you're planning as a school board, when you submit, you'll get the chance to say, yes, this is, this is, um, this is a position that's being submitted by ABC school district. You would have had to have taken a board vote on it in order for that to be true. As an alternative, and especially in the sake of time, you can also determine that there's an individual school board member who can submit, uh, but it wouldn't be on your district's behalf. It would literally just show that individual's name. Um, and that is impacted most specifically because in our handbook, it'll say who submitted, either the individual or the school board or the school boards together. Uh, and what we have heard from school districts uh, during the position uh, process, the discussion process, is that where they see a school board has uh, submitted or multiple school boards have submitted, it gives it a little more strength than an individual. But we also recognize that it is April 5th, so you have 15 more days to submit a position. You may not have a school board member or school board meeting um, scheduled where you can take a vote before the window closes. So recognize that that could be an obstacle that you're facing right now. Logan. I just want to add, um, if you intend to take a school board vote, you can indicate that. So you don't have to have a school board meeting before April 20th to submit it, this as your school board. If you scroll down, Marissa, I just want to show them. Um, if you could scroll down and just say um, you're submitting the proposal on behalf of your board, if you could click that. And then down below, you'll see another pop-up question right there that says, uh, scroll up just a little bit. Perfect. So this proposal was approved already, or you could say approval is pending. And what that could mean is maybe you have a school board meeting on April 26th, where you're gonna take that vote. You can still submit the position as your board. And if you indicate that it's pending, then Marissa or myself or Kelsey, someone, We'll follow up with you to say, um, hi, Lynn, did, you, uh, did your school board take a vote on this or not? If they did, great, we'll put your school board's name there. If they did not, then we will list it as an individual. So just know you do have that option. And um, the, as Marissa just said, school directors have indicated that positions um, indicate that they're stronger if they are submitted by a full board or a group of boards as compared to an individual, although that's still a possibility. Thanks, Logan, good clarification. Um, so again, in the, in, we got a about five minutes left. Um, please feel free to pop a question in the chat if you have one, wanna be sure you have your questions answered. Again, also know as you think about this, you're welcome to reach out to us directly. Just wanted to reiterate as you get in here, if, if your board reviews all the positions and decides, yeah, we'd like to submit something, um, Again, just reading through this, it is, it's crucial that you've already read the positions before you submit to be sure there's no duplication and you've really thought through what's substantive. Um, you'll note that all these things are said, we're like a broken record around here. Um, we also suggest that as you're considering that you might reach out to your director area representative on either the legislative committee or the resolutions committee. Um, they have been through this process, many of them, uh, for many, many years and can help give you guidance, uh, especially if you have questions about, well, has this been ever, has this been submitted before? Is there another position like it? How, how should I phrase this particular sentence? They can help you if you need help in that regard, but also can just be a good thinking partner for you as you're moving this work forward. Um, Again, they're not there to be a gatekeeper. They're really there to be a, in a supportive role to give you the best opportunity for success. So we would encourage you to reach out to them as you consider your proposal submissions. Uh, we'll just say it again, it closes April 20th at 5 p.m. No late submissions will be accepted. Um, and then it walks you through <laughs> some things again that we've really emphasized is 
Have you reviewed the positions already? Um, uh, have you spoken with your DA? Um, what are you thinking of proposing? Retiring, combining, revising, or creating? So those are your options. As an individual, on behalf of your board, or jointly with one or more boards, it'll ask for your contact information. Um, and then you'll also embed it in this, depending on which radio button you push, give you the opportunity to actually type the language in. So you'll need to know the title you'd like to offer, what the position should say, and then any, any kind of background language that would be used to help support a positive vote uh, for our membership. And that information will be used in the handbook so that it can help orient other school board members to the why, to your why specifically. And then the last part of this is an attestation um, that the person submitting this information is truly a school board member. This is a school board member process only. Um, this is not for your superintendent or another student or your mom, because um, I know my mom wouldn't know how to function any of this stuff. Um, she can't even work her VHS. Yeah, she still has one. But um, you need to be the person submitting uh, the actual position. It has to come from a school board member. So that's the attestation here. So that's just a quick walkthrough, but I would encourage you to dig in there. Um, if you accidentally submit something that's incomplete, we'll follow up with you to get the rest of the information. So don't worry, you're not going to break the form. Um, uh, but uh, if anything isn't there that we need, we'll follow up with you to let you know. Close to the end of time. Logan, anything to add? Brittany, anything to add? Sean is listening, our communications guy. Any questions from you all? Nothing, nothing uh, substantive to add, but I do just want to clarify, um, should you choose to submit a proposal jointly with other school boards, I believe the form allows you to include up to five. Um, should you, I don't know, should you for some reason band together with like 15 other boards to submit something, I think that's totally possible. Um, but in terms of the form itself, you can submit five, if you have others, um, reach out. We can add them to the side. Yep. Sean, you turned on your screen. Anything you wanted to add? I was just, sure, you touched on it, but just to reiterate, as you start filling out the form, the form transforms itself based on every response you put in. So uh, just wanna make sure that's clear to folks. That's all, thanks. Thanks, Sean. And um, only one submission per form. So if you have three that you're hoping to submit, that'll be three separate submissions. Okay, we took this right to the last minute. It's 12.59. Everything clear as mud to y'all, like you know this, you understand your call to action. You're going back to your next board, but you're gonna go share the positions with all your fellow board members. I'm gonna After having them. read them. You, yes, yeah, you did? And no, after having read them, then you will share them and then you yeah. will encourage them to read them. Yes, it's, it's good reading, it's good. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us if you have questions uh, or anything throughout the process. We're always happy to help. You can find our email addresses and phone numbers in lots of places on the WASDA website. We're, we're definitely here to support you through this. So thanks for engaging. One last question from Sarah and then we'll close it. Sarah. A uh, um, quick tip that I got from the amazing Sandy Hayes um, on how uh, an effective way to engage my full board in the process, which is instead of asking my board like, hey, go look at all the positions and then tell me what changes you want to make, saying, hey, are there places where you feel like we're undersupported in our needs legislatively? Share that with me. I'll go figure out how that, and I'll work with the WASDA strategic advocacy team who's on speed dial. Right, I'll go figure that out. And then we'll talk about like, how do we make that happen? Because I found that my board members, like once I said like, go look at all the positions, they were like, oh my gosh, no, I can't do that, right? <laughs> like it's too much. Um, so it's such a great tip from Sandy that I'm paying forward. Love it. Thank you, Sarah. I think that's a great way to close. Let us know how we can support you. We're here. Thanks for being here today, y'all. Appreciate it.